today's video I want to talk about the mechanism of ventilation uh, I've got I've included a definition here so ventilation is the rhythmic movement of air between the environment and the lungs via processes of inhalation and exhalation if you didn't know inhalation is breathing air into the lungs exhalation is removal of air from the lungs and something I just want to quickly mention uh, just to help you understand this topic uh, the air will always move from a higher partial pressure to a lower partial pressure. So the the fundamentals of ventilation, the main reason it occurs is differences in pressure between the environment and the lungs, okay? So when we have a high partial pressure in the environment in comparison to a lower partial pressure inside the lungs, we can have inhalation. And for exhalation, we need to have a higher pressure inside the lungs and a lower one in the environment, and then exhalation is gonna occur. So remember, air will move from a higher partial pressure to a lower partial pressure, okay? That's just something I wanted to mention to help this video, to help you understand this video a little bit better. Okay, now let's look at this image on the left. Uh, this is looking at the thoracic cavity from the inside out. So this is the rear side of the sternum. You can see the diaphragm here, the rib cages. Uh, let's talk about the... Uh, the uh, muscles which you can see here. These are known as intercostal muscles. They are involved in inhalation and exhalation. Um, now these ones that you can actually see are the internal ex uh, intercostal muscles. We also have the external ones and you can't see them in this picture but they're on the other side. So remember there's two layers of these. We also have the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts and helps to increase the volume and obviously the intrapleural pressure will decrease because of this and this will aid inhalation. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, let's move on. Uh, now there's two types of inhalation. We have relaxed inhalation and forced inhalation. Uh, obviously, you know the difference. One, you're doing it uh, calmly. The other one, you're forcing the inhalation inwards. And obviously they require different mechanisms. So the con for relaxed inhalation, we have the contraction of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is gonna contract and you're gonna have contraction of the intercostal muscles, the external ones, okay? Now the effects of this is it's gonna increase the volume of the thorax, the thoracic volume and the lung volume, okay? And the intrapulmonary pressure is gonna decrease to minus three millimeters of mercury and this is relaxed inhalation. Now, if you're gonna force this inhalation, then you have the same contraction of the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles, but you also have additional contraction of accessory muscles. So what's gonna happen is the scalene muscles will contract and the sternocleidomastoid muscles will contract, okay? And this is gonna help to decrease the inter intrapulmonary pressure to minus 20 millimeters of mercury. So you can see the big pressure difference. So this is minus 20 millimeters of mercury. This creates a bigger difference in pressure. So you're gonna have a greater uh, force of inhalation and also a greater amount of inhalation because there would be a much greater volume available, okay? We also have uh, exhalation. We have relaxed exhalation and forced exhalation. Oh, and this image here just is just showing you the diaphragm. I've included this as well. So we have relaxed exhalation. This is relaxation of the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. Okay, so in inhalation we have uh, contraction. In this in this process we have relaxation of the diaphragm and, and external intercostal muscles. And with this we have elastic recoil of the lungs. So the lungs are sort of gonna spring back. Remember, the lungs are very elastic. So we've inhaled and then the elasticity, once we've had relaxation of the diaphragm and these external intercostal muscles, there's gonna be sort of a elastic uh, sort of contraction of the lungs. They're gonna fall back to their original uh, structure. And what this is gonna do is decrease the lung volume and increase the intrapulmonary pressure to plus three millimeters of mercury. So this means there's a greater uh, pressure in the lungs in comparison to the atmosphere so we're going to force the air back out of the lungs but it's going to be a relaxed form of exhalation it's going to be very calm we also have forced exhalation this is where you breathe out with a lot of uh, force now what happens is we have the same me uh, method of relaxed exhalation so relaxed expiration is aided 
by additional contraction of the internal intercostal muscles. Remember, these are the ones which you can see on the top left here, in between. From If you're looking at it from this point of view, these are the ones on the inside. So you have uh, contraction of the internal intercostal muscles and the abdominal muscles. And what this does is it increases the intrapulmonary pressure to plus 30 millimeters of mercury. So it's going to be a much greater increase in intrapulmonary pressure. So what happens is we're going to force the air basically back out of the lungs by decreasing this volume by a greater amount. And remember, we also have uh, the relaxation of diaphragm and external intercostal muscles as well. But additionally, we have the contraction of internal intercostal muscles and the abdominal muscles. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's everything on this video. I think that's all I want to talk about. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this video useful.